In this question, we're going to find all solutions for x, given that x squared minus x cubed is equal to 36. Well, our first step will be for us to move 36 to the left-hand side so that we have x squared minus x cubed. And as 36 crosses to the left, it becomes minus 36. This is equal to 0. So this is simplified into x squared minus x cubed minus. Now we're going to break down 36. 36 is same as 27 plus 9. And this is equal to 0. So why did I use 27 and 9? It is because what I have here, we have a perfect cube and a perfect square. So the same thing here, 27 is a perfect cube and 9 is a perfect square. Now, this simplifies into x squared minus x cubed minus. Now, 27 as a perfect square can be written as 3 cubed plus 9 as a perfect square can be written as 3 squared. And this is equal to 0. Now, our next step will be for us to open up the brackets. So we have x squared minus x cubed minus 3 cubed. And then minus times plus is minus 3 squared. And this is equal to 0. Now, we just have to rearrange. Now, this is x squared. So I'm going to write that x squared. I'll move this 3 squared to it, so we have negative 3 squared. So this is negative 3 squared. Now this is negative x cubed, so negative x cubed. And we have negative 3 cubed. Negative 3 cubed equal to 0. Now there is something I want to do here. I want this x cubed to be positive. So what do I do? I'm going to be simplifying this into this is x squared minus 3 squared. Now, this will be minus. Then I'll open up a bracket. x cubed. Now, minus times this minus here becomes plus 3 cubed. And this is equal to 0. So we can now see that this x cubed is now positive. Now, we have two properties that we're going to work on here. Well, this is difference of two squares. Difference of two squares has property of, let's say, for example, I have x squared. Sorry, this is a squared minus b squared. This can be written as a minus b times a plus b. Now, we have another property. This is the sum of two cubes. Now, the sum of two cubes, let me write that here. For example, when I have a cube plus b cube, this can be written as a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. So we're going to be applying these two properties to what we have here. Now, from comparison, starting with this difference of two squares, I'm going to write this as x minus 3 times x plus 3. Then I have minus. I'll open up a bracket. Oh, no need. No need of that. Now, this is sum of two cubes. I'm going to write it in this form. So this will be x plus 3 times x squared minus x times 3 plus 3 squared. Very good. Equal to 0. So I wrote this in this form. Now let's simplify. This will be x minus 3 times x plus 3 minus this is x plus 3 times this is x squared. Now x times 3 is 3x, so this is minus 3x, and then plus 3 squared is 9. This is equal to 
0. Now notice that on the left hand side we have x plus 3 common. So we can factor out x plus 3 out. Now open up a bracket. Now this expression divided by x plus 3 you notice that x minus 3 will remain. So this is x minus 3 minus. Now this expression divided by x plus 3, you notice that this will remain, which is x squared minus 3x plus 9 will remain. Now close your bracket equal to 0. Now, our next step will be for us to simplify what we have here. So, this will be x plus 3 times, this is x minus 3. Now, I'll use this negative to open up the brackets. So, this will be minus x squared. So, minus x squared. Minus times minus is plus. So, we have plus 3x. And then, Minus times plus is minus 9. And this is equal to 0. Now, we need to simplify what we have here. So, we have x plus 3 times. Now, this is negative x squared. So, negative x squared. Now, let's add up like terms. x plus 3x is plus 4x. And then, negative 3 negative 9 is negative 12 and this is equal to 0. So there are two cases from here. We have the first case as x plus 3 equal to 0 or we have the second case as negative x squared plus 4x minus 12 to be equal to 0. So we're going to be solving these two cases one after the other. Now, from our first case, we can easily get the value of x by moving positive 3 to the right-hand side. When we do that, we have x to be equal to, as positive 3 crosses to the right, it becomes negative 3. Now, on the second case, or from the second case rather, now I have negative here, which is negative 1 as a coefficient of x squared. I don't want that. I want this to be positive. So what do I do? I multiply through by negative 1. So I'll take negative 1, multiply that with negative x squared plus 4x minus 12 to be equal to 0. So I'm multiplying both sides by negative 1. So negative 1 times negative x squared is positive x squared. Negative 1 times 4x is minus 4x. Then negative 1 times negative 12 gives plus 12. And this is equal to 0. Well, this quadratic equation cannot be factorized. And I'm not going to be using the quadratic formula. Instead, I'll be using the completing the square. Reason is because the coefficient of x is even. Now, using the completing the square means I move the constant term to the right so that we have x squared minus 4x on the left to be equal to, now as 12 crosses to the right, it becomes negative 12. Now, our next step will be for me to take the coefficient of x, which is negative 4. I'll divide that by 2 and I have to square the result. So this will be simplified into negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And this is raised to the 2. So I'll add this to both sides of the equation. So we have on the left, we have x squared minus 4x. I'll add negative 2 squared. This is equal to, then on the right, I have negative 12. I'll also add negative 2 squared to balance up the equation. Now notice that the left hand side is now a perfect square. So I'm just going to focus on the terms with square. So I have x, so I write down x, and I also have negative 2, so negative 2. Now group them with a power of 2. 
this is equal to now on the right hand side we have negative 12 plus negative 2 squared is 4. now this is simplified into x minus 2 or raised to the 2 to be equal to negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8 so i'm going to be writing negative 8 here now our next step will be for us to clear out this square by taking the square root of both sides. So I'll take the square root of the left, which is x minus 2 or raised to the 2. This is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 8. Now notice that this square root cancels out the square, leaving behind x minus 2 to be equal to plus or minus. Now let me simplify this. So this can be broken down into 4 times 2 times negative 1. That is it. And now simplifying further, this will be plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 times the square root of negative 1. I'm just breaking it down. So this will be x minus 2 equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 2, then the square root of negative 1 is i, which is the complex value, iota. Now, to get the value of x, I just have to move negative 2 to the right-hand side. And when I do that, I have x to be equal to, as negative 2 crosses to the right, it becomes positive 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 i. So there are two values of x from here, which are, well, we've got our first value of x, which is a real solution as a negative 3. This will be the second one, which is 2, go with a positive, plus 2 root 2i. Two then the third solution is 2 minus 2 root 2i. Two and there you have it. Well, you notice that we have one real solution and two complex solutions. Feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.